Good morning, Community Chapel. It is again an honor to be here with you, and we're so excited to be able to uh, worship with you later on this morning. And so this morning we're doing our Sunday School, Jen and I together, so we just would like to thank all of you for your love and support, and uh, just how much we love your church. I was inspired by the mug because they were always like positioned behind the messages, so I thought, I need to bring something like that here, so... Thank you, Matt, Matthew Harris, and all the design team for this amazing <laughs> prop. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, before I begin, I thought I would share just a quick uh, story uh, from our life so you can maybe know us a little better. But uh, we were here in this house during self-quarantine, and it happened to be April 1st, April Fool's Day. And uh, we were still, I was still jet lagging hardcore. And so I woke up at like 4.30 in the morning. I knew I was done. So I go out to the living room, sit in the recliner and praying, doing very holy things. And I think, oh, it's April Fool's Day. I should, I should help the children. So I got some toothpaste. I put it on the light switch there in the bathroom. And I cannot tell you how much joy I had sitting in the living room. And my children would wake up at various times. I'd hear them open the one door, leave their bedroom, go into the bathroom. I'd wait five seconds, and then here we come, the, the water in the bathroom sink as they're wiping their toothpaste off. And I sat in that living room and laughed to myself, and they would leave, and then I would go back and rearm the toothpaste on the, on the light switch. That brought so much joy to my heart. Um, so I don't know if that tells you what kind of a dad I am, um, but I tell you, I love to laugh. I love my kids. Um, and so it's just... Life is beautiful, and so it's fun to be able to share that with family. I'm glad that my wife's a good sport uh, because I, yeah, I've done a lot of things to you, babe, but yes, she's yeah. forgiven me so yes. many times, even when I was a little inappropriate. Um, so anyway, just thought I would share that with you this morning. Happy Sunday morning. So Jen, I'll let you share now. <laughs> Well, it's good to be back with you guys, and we really do look forward to seeing you at 11 today. Um, we missed last week. We were out of town, so we're really excited to be back and to be back in church worshiping with you. And so we're going to just, I guess, just kind of keep talking about what we talked about um, a couple of weeks ago. And so I'll just give you kind of a recap of what what it was that we talked about for, for maybe some that missed that or whatever. And we talked about um, the stress test. And when you go into a stress test and you're at the hospital and they you're on the um, treadmill. treadmill, thank you, it's early in the morning here for me. Um, so you're on the treadmill and they start to put stress on your body. And it's for a purpose. It's to reveal what, what is happening inside. It's to reveal what is going on with the heart. And so a lot of times when you're in stressful situations, we talked about that there were things that we could do. We could worship in the battle. We could um, get into the word and, and hold on to his promises and meditate on the promises of God. We talked about um, being able to anchor. Hope is the anchor of our heart and that when we have hope, we're anchored and we're anchored to him and that we need to begin to release hope and to see things um, at the end of the tunnel, right? I mean, you have stress coming, but yet you can keep your eyes fixed on him who is our hope. And so these are things that we can do when the trials come, when the stress comes. What the, what the issue is, is that if if you make it through those trials and those stress and you make it to the end and everything is okay and you continue on, that's great. That's awesome. But sometimes what happens is when you're in the stress test, you fail it. And what, what it reveals to the doctors is that something is going on deeper inside. Right. Something is wrong. It's not functioning properly. And so you have to go deeper. And so many of them will begin to say, okay, now we're going to go do a heart cath, which is a camera, and it goes up into the heart to find out what is really going on with the heart. And so um, in life, there are many stressors that happen, many trials. And a lot of times we find ourselves hopeless. We find ourselves... Um, 
extremely depressed and all of these things begin to come out and it just reveals to us something is not right with our heart. So. Yeah, I think that's, that's such, it's such an excellent point. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's very important that as, as mature Christians or as Christians who are maturing, that we understand there is a difference between pain management and getting healthy. And I, I, I believe there are a lot of people who know things that are good to do. I'm going to meditate on scripture. I'm going to worship. And it provides a relief for the season. But sometimes I feel like we're missing the issue of the heart. What is the systemic root of this situation? Right. And, and what can I do to get healthy and get stronger so that I can, I can be more effective and more productive for the kingdom? And so I kind of want to... We want to talk about that together about some issues of the heart. And I think for me, um, love, it really is. It's, it's the make or break point of our Christianity. Mm -hmm. And it really is the source of life for our heart. Uh, I know many of us are familiar with heart attacks. Uh, but I remember when I learned about them as a teenager, I was so surprised to really consider the fact that the heart is a living organism that needs blood flowing to it so that it can be healthy and strong. And, and I see people in the church, and because of the culture that we live, there's, there's a lot of pressure on people's lives. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of things that are, that are attacking us, that are coming against us, um, and, and it's really affecting our hearts. Mm -hmm. And it makes me sad when we hear of these very uh, influential influencers who are in, in the church, leading Christians, and they fall away. And you think, how did you become an atheist from being a Christian leader? And I really believe the issue is this thing of the heart. Yeah. And we can get so focused on what we're doing with our energy and our exercise and our diet mm -hmm. that we forget there are things that our heart specifically needs. And if there is a, if there's a thing that's beginning to affect the blood supply to our heart, then we are in danger of serious health consequences. Right. And so in, in, in the day that we live, I, I just want to encourage us all mm -hmm. that we have to be aware. Um, I believe that we are, in fact, living in the last times. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 12, well, Matthew 24, Jesus lists the wars, rumors of wars, the pestilences, all of the things that are going to happen, earthquakes, and that really sad list. But I'll tell you, for me, the scary thing is the fact that Jesus said, uh, because of the lawlessness that abounds, the love of many grows cold, right. waxes cold. Mm -hmm. And I really believe yeah. that is such a big issue for us, um, is that because we live in such a culture that is, it's like a, I don't know, just like foaming waters, like these crashing waves, and it really affects our heart if we're not careful and alert. So today I want to look at a passage um, out of the book of Jude. Uh, it's, it's a great book, a lot of good promises there. So Jen, if you'd read the first two verses. Okay, I'm going to read Jude 1, which is, there's only one chapter, 18 and 19. In the last days there will always be mockers motivated by their own ungodly desires. These people cause divisions and are followers of their own natural instinct, devoid of the life of the Spirit. Mm. And I mean, that's amazing. It says, in the last mm -hmm. days, I believe we're living in those days. And then it talks about scoffers. And I look at that word in the Greek, and, and really it means that. Scoffing, mocking, and it means jeering. Mm -hmm. And I think, man, those words really characterize much of the way that, 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 that America, and I believe the world, is beginning to interact. There is, a, there is a mocking of others who have different ideas. There is a jeering at somebody and, and name calling. I mean, if you dare to post on Facebook your stance on any issue, any issue, just pick one, any issue, you will get those who unfriend you, say mean and terrible things against you. It's amazing. You're not even allowed your own opinion because your opinion will offend somebody else. And, and we have to be so aware that that is, I believe, that mocking, that jeering spirit, it's like 
cholesterol to the arteries yeah. and to the veins that feed our heart. Mm -hmm. And if we get caught up in that spirit, it begins to weaken the capacity of our heart to yeah. live from love. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's a trap that we have to watch out for. Uh, it goes on in that verse to talk about how that mocking spirit creates divisions. Mm. Man, do we see that in our day. I, I couldn't believe it. We have a medical issue going on, COVID-19, and there was so much rhetoric that had to do with who's right and who's wrong right. and, and this conspiracy here and this group is negligent there. And, yeah. and it was so depressing. Yeah. I mean, watching the world news, yeah. I did yeah. not like it. I'll be honest. Facebook is not my friend. I want to follow people and know what's happening in their life. But I, it hurts my heart. I'll be honest. As a, as a man who's given my life to, to young people yeah. and students, it breaks my heart to see them filled with hatred. To see them fomenting these ideas and these doctrines. Yeah. And it's not bringing peace, not to them, not to anybody. Right. But that's how the enemy works. He seeks to divide. And we yeah. see in Joshua that when he goes to scout Jericho, the angel of God appears to him and says, and Joshua says, well, whose side are you on? Mine or theirs? <laughs> and God says, neither. I'm captain of the host. And, mm -hmm. and Joshua fell in line behind God. And I really believe that's what we as the church have to do in this day. We're not allowed to pick this side or that side. The issue is, are we on God's side? Right. Are we saying what he's saying in right. this day? And so I say that to say that, that love to our heart really is the key to living the life that we were created for. And so uh, I want Jen now to read the next verse because I don't want to get lost here in the mockery divisiveness. I want to see what is our response. It's not just what we don't do, but what do we need to do do, <laughs> do, -do uh, in order to grow in God? Well, verse 20 goes on to say... Um, but you, my, my loved friends, constantly, progressively build yourselves up on the foundation of your most holy faith by praying every moment in the Spirit. Fasten or keep your heart to the love of God. Receive the mercy of our Lord Jesus who gives us eternal life. Yeah, I have been for the past month just rolling around in that idea of keeping myself in the love of God. And I really believe, Jen, that is the only way that we are going to be able to keep our heart healthy, which will in turn keep our life strong and vibrant. Yeah. We must actively keep ourselves in the love of God. Yeah. It's not enough to be right. We are called yes. to be loved. Yeah. The Bible says that faith works by love. It says, speak the truth in love. First Corinthians 13 says, it doesn't matter what we do. If love is not the root, the fruit is corrupt. Right. And so I, I know for myself, I'm a very passionate person. And if I'm not consciously working on keeping myself in the love of God, then I'm, I'm, I'm liable to get off on a, on a crusade of some sort. Yeah. And I really believe that right now, as the church, we have to begin to keep ourselves in the love of God. And when I look at that word keep, I, I looked it up in the New Testament. How many times does it appear? It appears 75 times. And it was kind of interesting because that word keep has several different applications. One form of that word is that word keep like Paul, when he got kept in prison by his guards, or Peter, when they kept him in the prison. So there's that, that sense of watching for, keeping an eye on. It's not a jail kind of a, of a, of a capture. It's more of a keep your eye on them. Be right. alert. Be watchful. Be attentive. They might try to escape. And I really feel like that is a very important application for us. If we are not keeping ourselves in the love of God, God, I thank you. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we would become children of God, that we, be, that we would be called children of God. And that is what we are. We have to remind ourselves daily, sometimes hourly, minute by minute, I am loved his love is perfect. It's pure. Yeah. And there's nothing I can do to make him love me more. There's nothing I can do to make him love me less. I want to live in the fullness of the love of God. 
Uh, my wife and I, we joke, but uh, we, we read a marriage book many, many years ago as we were getting married, and it talked about the hand being closed. And there are moments when my wife, as a very emotional and sensitive female, I will say something offensive, I don't even know how, and the hand of love becomes closed. Yeah. And when I try to, to demonstrate my love, to give a hug, to say I love you, I don't make very much progress because the condition of the heart is closed. I've, I've grieved her. I've offended her with my words. Mm. And I have to, to gently allow her to reopen her heart. And I have to apologize in humility and say, wow, I, I'm sorry. I'm bull in a china cabinet here. <laughs> and, you know, that, that love, you have to watch out for it. You have to yeah. guard it. And we have to keep ourselves in the love of God. We are made to live a life of yeah. love. The Apostle Paul said, I am constrained. I am compelled. I am motivated by love. Yeah. And so we daily have to find how to live in that love. And there are disciplines that we can do daily. Meditation, just being quiet. Be still and know that I am God. When we get quiet for minutes, long minutes, and we just think about his love, mm -hmm. and we receive that love, and then we reciprocate in that love. And so the other kind, the other part of love is the watchfulness of the love, but there's also that keep as in keep my commands. Mm -hmm. There is an awareness of this is a new reality, and I have to, I have to act. I have to think and I have to do out of that new reality. And so I want, Jen, I would like you to share about keeping ourselves in the love of God and, and maybe the action form of what that sure. looks like. Yeah. So that, that word keep is a doing word. It, it It is something that you have to do. And that is, you know, I was thinking about things that, that are flowing into your life. And that is, you know, Am I taking in unhealthy things that are causing my heart to be blocked? Am I, am I taking in things that, like Facebook or the news or just um, social media, all of it is, it, is it affecting me in a way that is causing me to have a hardened heart or a blockage in my heart? And I was thinking, um, I went to Israel um, in December, and we went to um, the Sea of Galilee, and it's it's vibrant, and it's beautiful, and, and the ecosystem is alive, and there's fish, and, and greenery everywhere. It's just so beautiful, right? And it has an inflow, and it has an outflow, and that outflow is the Jordan River, and it flows, and it flows all along. We drove all along, and it's just, it's gorgeous, right? And it goes all along, and it empties into the Dead Sea, right? The Dead Sea is not alive. It's it's dead. And there's there's no life existing in it. And you know, it it can actually it's it's pretty much it just it just sits there and builds up and builds up and builds up and builds up. And I find it so fascinating because that it has the inflow, but then it stays. It doesn't have the outflow. Yeah. And so the same thing for the heart. It has to have the inflow and the outflow in order for it to be functioning 100%, in order for it to be alive and well and healthy. And so many times, maybe things have happened and we have a, a, a hardened heart towards God. And so our time with God is not is not this inflow and outflow of I love you God and and you are expressing your heart to him but also you have to receive his yeah. love for yourself I know there have been times where John has um, talked about that he he did not really like himself and so he had a hard time receiving love and I know some people really struggle with that and Jesus wants to heal that part mm -hmm. so that you are also able to receive the love of God, but then you can give the love, give love back to God that he deserves. And, but then it even goes on. And that is that as we receive that love, we have to give out love to others. Yeah. 
the other day I was I was so amazed we were um, we had done a garage sale we packed up all of our stuff in the van and I said okay I'm gonna go to the DAV and I'm gonna drop all this stuff off so I don't have to look at it again no. we get to the DAV it's like a hundred and ten degrees out there it's like three o'clock in the afternoon and there are boxes of books and heavy stuff and I'm thinking I'm looking at Hannah and I'm thinking Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to empty out this whole thing. Well, from the corner, there's this young young man that comes running over. He's sweating. I mean, you could tell he had been working hard. And he was like, let me get that for you. And he came over and he just started grabbing those boxes and just taking them and putting them. And he literally, every time I would grab a box to go help him take it, he would run over and take that from me and, and go. And I was... I was so amazed because mm -hmm. he is working his tush off mm -hmm. and it's 110 and here we are and I know it was his job, but you could tell that, that he needed something. So I go to my purse because I'm like, you know what, I'm going to give this guy a tip. And all I had was just like, like big bills. I didn't have anything to give him and I thought, man, okay, shoot. And I felt terrible. I get my van, I'm driving off. And Hannah's like, oh man, mom, that, what are we going to do? And I was like, I'm going to go get him a big Sonic drink and I'm going to break my bills and I'm going to give him a big tip. So I go to Sonic, we get it, we, we come back and he's still working and he pulls and I pull up and I, I say, come here, bud, come here. And so he's thinking, oh no, I did something wrong. You know, I could tell he had that look of like, oh, they're back. And so Hannah hands him the drink and then we hand him the money and I said, bud, it is hot out there and I super appreciate what you just did for me. And you could see the shock mm. in his face of like, you did this for me? Mm. And I was like, but Jesus loves you. And I was like, I so thank you for all that you're doing here. And he was like, well, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. And he walked away and he felt the love of God, but the cool thing was is that Hannah and I felt the love of God Amen. flow from us to him. Yeah. And I encourage you guys, it is a doing word. Yeah. As you receive the love of God, you must allow it to flow out of your life. Yeah. As it flows in and flows out, your heart begins to soften. Yeah. Those blockages begin to go away. Yeah. I know that unforgiveness, offense, bitterness, all of those things are blockage. Yeah. And it blocks the love of God from going out, but it also blocks the love of God coming in. And so we have to go deep in our hearts and deal with those things. Allow Jesus to come in and take his his instruments and open up our hearts. And so I just, I, I really wanted to, to say that when your heart is open yeah. and it, and it's flowing and it's functioning, you are going to feel alive. Yeah. And it's, it is so much better than being ruled by hate yeah. and by bitterness. Yeah. Or fear. Fear. I hate Absolutely. that stuff. Yeah, I, I, I learned this many years ago, that there are two ways to experience the love of God. And that is when the love of God comes to you and when the love of God flows yes, through you. Absolutely. And we are in a day where we have to do both. Mm -hmm. We need, my goodness, Jesus said, yeah. freely you have received, freely give. Right. And I get it. There have been seasons in my life where there was nothing to give, uh, at least not that I could tell. And it's much better to live out of an overflow and to live from that place of love. Mm -hmm. And when we do, then we find ourselves enjoying our family more. We, we find ourselves appreciating our workplace more. Yeah. And we need that. Our, our community is hurting. Our nation is divided. And Jesus is the answer because yes. he is the Prince of Peace. He is the father of love and mercies. Yes. And so we, we as the church, uh, are called to be, I heard this word recently, solutionaries. We are called right. to be people who bring yeah. solutions to the problems that this world has. Right, right. But that has to come from love. It can't come from being right intellectually, politically, or culturally. It has to come from a heart of love. 
And if we can, and we have the ability to tap in to our Father's nature, God is love. Yeah. And as we sit in his presence, as we turn our gaze from the troubles of this life to who he is, yeah. it begins to bring that love of God. And that love activates our faith. Mm -hmm. If we're struggling, I'll tell you, even in a physical sickness, if I, if I begin to realize how much the Father loves me, it makes my faith a lot more tangible. And that's what that verse just before keeping yourself in love talks about. It says, build your most holy faith, right. praying in the Spirit. Yes. And we need that. We need yeah. to build our faith. We need to pray in the Spirit. And, and, and as we root ourselves in that love, our hearts will be healthy and it will lead to strength in our body. Yeah. And we will have something to give yeah. to our loved ones, our neighbors, yeah. and whoever else that God puts into our life. So I just, I thank you for taking the time to listen to us this morning. I know that our day is very complicated. We have, we have issues on every side, yeah. but we have a God who's bigger. That's right. And he is the God of miracles. Yeah. And I believe that he is going to raise up a new generation. Yeah. The Josephs who bring solutions, the Esthers who bring encounters. Right. We are a part of a movement that is going to change this world. And the kingdom of God is going to be revealed in a way that we may not have thought possible. Arise and shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Yeah. Jen, I'd like you to finish up today. Okay. <laughs> um, how do we know that, um, you know, that we are Christians, it says, by our love for yeah. one another. Yeah. And it is it is so important that our hearts are healthy and that we're, we're allowing Jesus to reveal things in our lives. Yeah. So I do believe that that there are those today that have been listening that maybe maybe there have been something that you're you're dealing with, like an offense or something that has caused you to harden your heart or to just have that that mm, I I cannot deal with this right now and I just I just I'm gonna pray over us and pray over everyone that that God would just reveal those areas and that we would allow him to do it you know as as a patient of a doctor you have to allow yourself to lay on the table and allow him to do all that he needs to do to go in and fix the heart and we have to allow Jesus to do that. He's not going to come in and just start ripping things out of our lives. We have to say, Father, have your way. Yeah. And so today, let's just pray. And so, Father, today I just pray for, for our lives. I pray for those that are listening and our community. God, I just pray that you would have your way in our hearts, in our lives. Father, reveal the things that are blocking us that are blocking arteries in our hearts, God. Father, just those things that harden it. Lord, reveal to us what it is. And Father, I ask that you would go in and begin to soften and remove and help us to remove those things out of our lives so that you can pour your love into us and we can pour our love into others and that we would be like that Sea of Galilee, Amen. vibrant and alive and well and healthy. And God, that, that we would um, just represent who you really are. And that is you are love. You are love. And Father, love, the love of God melts all hearts. And God, it, it is it is un explainable the love of God and so right now I pray pour out your love on us that you would pour out your love on those that are listening that they would feel it and it would soften their hearts and that we would have soft hearts before you and so Jesus we thank you we thank you for today and I just bless every person in Jesus name amen amen, amen. Thank love you guys. guys see you soon thank you Bye.